Hey guys, I know I've been out for a while, but I'm back and I'm taking a little break. Long story, but let me tell you what I've been up to lately. Okay, so what I've got here is a Raspberry Pi. I bought the very latest and greatest Raspberry Pi, which is number four, version four, it, with four gigabytes of RAM. You get to pick how much RAM you want, and I got the best. Because when you're messing around with the Pi, it's not very responsive if, unless you have a lot of RAM. So this is the most responsive, and I'm kind of using this as a laptop almost. So I've got a little screen here, and I've got the HDMI port, I've got power. Everything is being run off this tiny little computer. My goal is to get this tiny little compact thing that I can take with me. Now everything I have here, I'm gonna link in the description. So if you wanna know what it is, it's in the description. And I have it connected to the ICOM 7300. Now just so you know, none of this is original. There's videos out there already on how to do this. I'm just giving you an update of what I've been doing, okay, and what I can do. So this is just a screen by itself by Lepow, L-E-P-O-W. This is a Bluetooth keyboard. And like I said, my goal is to have like a portable laptop, not really a laptop, but a portable Pi, and maybe even a smaller screen than when I bought this screen thinking it wasn't as big as it is, but it's really nice and big, but it's not as carryable as I thought. So, but the cool thing is I can swap the screen out. Unlike a laptop, you can't swap the screen out. So, the question is, you may be asking, what is a Raspberry Pi? All it is, is a Linux computer, okay? So if you're thinking about buying one, I'm gonna tell you, okay, they're very cheap, they're less than $65, they're, you can get them even cheaper, down to $35, but I wanted the very best that's out right now, which is a Raspberry Pi number four, with four gigabytes of RAM, because I'm gonna use it as a computer. Now, I had already bought this a while back. This is a Raspberry Pi 1. And the problem with the older one, this is an RCA connection. And I have a Raspberry Pi 2 over there doing some work for me. Long story, but it's doing some work for me. I have it running all the time. But this is an old version, and I wouldn't recommend getting the older version because it doesn't come with like a wireless card built in. You have to like add it. But this one has wireless with it. It has Bluetooth. It has um, USB 3, I think, and it's got four USB ports. It has HDMI, sound, it has everything that you need in a little computer. I'm going to show you that. So what I'm, I wanted to do was install WSJTX, which is FT8 software. It's also Whisper software. And I got it installed, I got it working, and I'm going to show you how to do that. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to show you my settings. I had, it took me three or four nights to get this to work. If you buy a Raspberry Pi, I'm telling you right now, be prepared to be frustrated. I bought this, you've seen one of these, these RTL SDR. It's very cheap radio um, SDR, software defined radio, it's very cheap. I cannot get it to work on here yet. I haven't been able to get it to work. I even tried my Raspberry Pi 3. I want it to work on this computer here because I wanted to take it out in the field. But this, I cannot get this to work. So be prepared to be frustrated. I'm telling you, these things are not easy. All right, let's take a look at what is a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what is a Raspberry Pi? Let me give you an overview if you're interested in it. So think of this as a tiny little computer that doesn't run Windows because it's so tiny, it can't do it. It actually has a microchip in there that is not like the microchips that you get in a typical computer. I think it's called an ARM, an ARM chip, which is in cell phones and things like that. It's micro, it's very small, so it can be compact in this little little device. Now, I don't want to pick this one up because I have it all connected, but this is a Raspberry Pi, an older version of it, with a case around it. I had, I forgot I had this, but this is a Raspberry Pi 3B. Now, if you're really strapped for cash and you want to get one of these, this has a case around it, by the way. This is a case. This is a, a version three, and that's a version four. I wanted the latest and greatest, and I can use these for all kinds of applications, but it has a case on it. I highly recommend getting a case, otherwise you end up with a, a, a motherboard you're holding in your hand. Okay, so what do you get? You have to put a, one of these micro SD cards in it. So there's lots of videos on how to do it, but what you do is you install 
an operating system on here called Raspbian. There's other operating systems, but the common one is Raspbian, Raspbian, and this one has 32 gigabytes. These things are getting so cheap. All you need is a five, as a, as a 16 gigabyte card, and you put it in here and you plug it in. This is a, I think a, a micro USB. You get a an HDMI output on this one, and you plug it into a screen. You turn it on, and you have a computer. So this is running right now, and what do we have? All right, because I have the version 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM, it's pretty fast. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to put in uh, ham radio. See, it comes up just as fast as like a normal computer. If these, the older ones, are very slow and they're not responsive. That's why I wanted the latest and greatest. Because you'll, you'll type something and you'll have to wait, and you'll have to type something and you have to wait. So you can actually, on the 4, you can actually watch videos. I have on this episode a of speaker a. plugged in here. Be your first radio? Well, the answer is I have a regular computer speaker plugged in here. And I get I mean look at look at it. You can watch videos on this little computer. Welcome to another episode. It's not quite as fast and responsive as like a laptop or anything, but you can get a lot done. It's also a little flakier. But what else do you get? Alright, check it out. You get Bluetooth. This is a Bluetooth keyboard. This is something you, you can buy all kinds of keyboards, but I, and you can even plug a keyboard into the USB, but I got this Bluetooth one, Artec, and if you wanna, if you wanna connect it, you just do add device, it does a search and a pair, and let's see if it works. See, I'm typing, and this chart, this Artec keyboard charges with a micro USB also. This is like the old cell phone kind of thing. So, in a case, in the case I wanted to carry this with me, I've got this, this, and a monitor, and I'm ready to go. Go to a hotel room or go out in the field and set it up. All right, so this lapel monitor, a little expensive at about $180. Um, there's all kinds of monitors out there. I actually wish I would have got a smaller one because this is gonna be hard to carry. It came with this case, which is a little bit flaky. It's kind of flaky because I can't get it to stand upright. This is the best I can do with it. But, I mean, it's beautiful. So what do you get with a Raspberry Pi? All right, if you don't know, this is a Linux-based computer. This is a Linux command line. And so we can do like a, uh, an LS for list, and it's, it's an operating system, but it's Linux, and this is a great way to learn Linux. I have some, this smoke is, uh, this smoke is some incense because it smells bad in the basement. All right, so it's just like any other computer, though. You've got a browser. You can look around in your folders. You can use a command line, or you can look around in your folders like this, desktop. Um, you can look around music and all kinds of things, pictures. It's a different folder structure than a regular Windows computer, but it's still the same idea. Files are files. Folders are folders. It's the same thing. So Linux is not that bad. All right, this comes with Wi-Fi in it, and I have it connected. It comes with not just Wi-Fi, but the 5 gigahertz, not just the 2. I think these older ones have the 2 gigahertz um, signal. All right, it comes with pre uh, programs. Pre-installed programs, you've got things like, well, Scratch is a programming language for kids to learn how to program, all kinds of stuff. Office, which is uh, basically Excel, Word math, internet, FL Digi. Okay, so I installed, and the whole point of this is to update you with what I've been doing. So what have I done with this computer, this little tiny computer? I went to, and here's how you do it. Once you have everything up and running, you have Raspbian installed. If you go to pre Preferences, Add Remove Software, you type in WSJTX I wouldn't even mess with the command line. I tried that. It didn't work. I actually just went here to add programs. And because it's installed, it might look a little different. But I installed all of these weak, WSP, uh, weak signal amateur radio, WSJTX. I installed all of these. I hit apply, OK. Everything is installed. And then once you do that, you come here to ham radio. It might be under electronics or something else. 
But I go to ham radio and I type in, or I click on WSJTX. Okay, so it took me a lot of time to get this working. You get this warning, air and sound output. Okay, as you can see, this is working. I got it set up. The only, the only wire I have is a USB, this USB to the ICOM 7300. Now this radio is the one that's probably the easiest one I've ever worked with. And I'm gonna turn it down. So, WSJTX, what did I do to get this working? It took, like I said, it took like three nights because I, I had to try this and that and this and I tried this other card, nothing worked. But as you see, it can work. Okay, so of course it's connected. But what you have to do is go to File. By the way, everything else I got was on YouTube. There's other videos showing you how to set things up. But I had to tweak some things. So in WSJTX, you have to go to File and Settings. And the radio and audio are the two very important things you have to mess with. So for the radio, you can choose your radio here. Of course, I chose ICOM 7300, and you have to choose your serial port, and for this, it has USB 0. I, put, I picked USB 0, which is the USB port here, not the other one. The settings for the radio, I will get to in a minute, okay? Here's my other settings, so 115-200 for the serial port, 8 to none. then I have RTS, and again, I chose the USB 0, data packet, and fake it. Now you can do your test. This is the rig control. It's very important that this controls the rig from here. And as soon as you do that, you should be synced up. The, the, the frequency you see on here, 7074, should also be seen over here so on the radio, 7074. Okay, so this is all working. Now the other thing was, file, settings, audio. This is the part that I had a lot of trouble with. Now I'm gonna suggest, if you're using this setup, to try different things. I picked the default card equal codec. And I picked default card equal also. And I didn't even know what I'm doing. I'm not even sure how it works, but I tried different things until it worked. So here I have default card equals codec, default color card equals also, and you should start seeing waterfall coming down. This should be able to control your radio. You should come over here and pick mode FT8, for example, but pick pick 40 meters, and it has 7074 and 7078. I pick 7074. It changes my radio over here. I know it's working. Then I start seeing signals over here. This is your receive on this side. And this is kind of like the send. And so I'm gonna prove that it works here in a second because this is FT8. FT8, as you know, is probably like the simplest thing you can do. So just think about this as being your receive. All these people are calling and talking to each other. They're calling and talking to each other. And this is more like, kind of like a, this is the band activity. And this is the receive frequency. So let's take, for example, all right. After you put in your configurations in the settings, so in the general tab, you have to put in your call sign, your grid number, I am EM48 RS, and then it generates for me all of these messages over here that are automatic. And they will call people and they will automatically do it for you. So here, down here, you can call CQ, and I have it highlighted but it will automatically cycle through these and do everything for you. That's why FT8 is considered so easy is because it does so much for you. So let's prove that it works here. And what I'm gonna do is wait for someone to call CQ. Well, why don't we just notice that you can choose things here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose CQ and I'm gonna just call CQ. I'm gonna enable transmission and notice that I'm transmitting. It's highlighted yellow, okay? Let's see what happens. So I'm pretty sure that this works on a 15 second cycle. 15 seconds on, 15 seconds listen, 15 seconds transmit, and so forth. So I'm calling CQ, let's just see what happens. Out of the blue, have no idea what's gonna happen. Last
last night, and I made a contact just like that. Down here is your 15 second window. It kind of stops at 4 15 seconds, but now we're listening. Watch that. What's cool about this is I got it working on this computer. On Windows, this is way easier, or maybe some other computer on a laptop or something. But getting it working on the laptop on a Raspberry Pi is not easy. So I'm going to turn that down. Okay, calling CQ is not working. Do I have enough power? Am I tuned? All right, here's another thing. So I'm gonna offset the frequency, and remember you need to tune. I was messing around last night, and I may not be tuned up. I forgot to do that. So this is a tune button right here. We'll give you a carrier, and really quickly, I will tune at a low level, very low wattage. Okay, so I just had a bunch of problems, and I worked through them. I actually Googled the problem. And I got the answer. So I, I typed in, here's how you here's how you have to do Linux. WSJTX um, no power. No output, it just comes right up. You just have to just read things, right? And this person said WSJTX, I'm not getting any output on transmission. Someone writes 99% of the time you don't have the right sound card codec. And I real codec, and I realized that was it. So I went back into my settings because I had guessed. I don't know why, but they got knocked off. And I went into my audio codec, and you have to play with these. The one that worked was called Sys Default Card Equals Codec. Sys Default Card Equals Codec. And what I had did done the other day was I took screenshots of my settings, and here is my setting. And I had it, and I was able to bring it back up. I got screenshots of all my settings, and I'll, and I'll include these if you want to see them. My G5 RV tunes very well. My G5 RV tunes very well on 40 meters. It's got like a one-to-one -one pretty much. All right, so now I'm going to listen. Let's go ahead and call CQ again now that I've reset the settings, and I have them saved. Let's call CQ. I have this selected CQ, and I'm going to call, oops, I'm going to call Enable Transmit. And so we'll just let it do its thing. Now I can actually see, because I have a meter over here that's actually transmitting. Before it wasn't doing that. So we're at 15 seconds of transmission. Now we're at 15 seconds of listening. Oh, look, I've got a... Now, if you have a dark red, that means he's contacting you. N91YO-N3JD. Someone's calling me. And now it's just going to do everything for me. It's going to go from these messages all the way down to 73. The dark red means you've made a contact. So he said his call sign, my call sign. Now N9YO from N3JD, he is in section EN91. I do not know where that is yet. Let's take a look here in a second. When you see the 7-3, you know everything's over with. I'm having a QSO, that's what FT8 is. It does it all for you, which is why people say it's boring, but it's a good, good exercise to go through. I actually kind of like it because sometimes I don't feel like doing anything, right? So it's kind of cool. I've got the Raspberry Pi. I've got my radio. Everything's working. My next challenge would be, how do I get this on the road? I want a smaller radio. I want to get my FT891 set up to work with the Pi. Then have all this piece here with the 891 and make these digital contacts and see if that works. Okay, I'm going to go and halt this. And the other cool thing about WSJTX is it comes pre-installed with... So I'm on the Whisper now, and I'm on 40 meters, and it automatically changed to 7038600, and I'm going to go ahead and enable transmit. 
And what it is, it's on a 120 second cycle, which is two minutes. I think it transmits for two minutes and it waits for two minutes, transmits for two minutes, waits for two minutes. What ends up happening is it puts out a tiny little signal and other people hear you. And then if you click this right here, it uploads the spots and you can communicate. You can, you can let people know where you heard them and they can let you know that they heard you. It's pretty interesting because what you end up doing is it takes a few minutes to this for this to actually work. But what you do in the same software, I just showed you what all you have to do is hit enable on whisper mode, WSPR. Then you go to WSPR map and you'll get a map and the map is a little bit flaky, but you'll see everyone talking to everyone within and there's parameters here, 40 meters, and what you can put in the last the time period, last 10 minutes. I'm gonna put in N9YO and just see if anyone at all heard me in the last couple minutes. 40 meters, that's where I'm at. Then you click update. This used to be a lot smoother when I did this like eight or nine years ago, but now it's, it's just, now what's happening is it's not showing anything because it's not coming up yet. You have to give it some minutes before something will happen. I'm gonna get rid of my call sign and just take a look at this. So it's working, it's still working, it's still sending a signal out, the whisper network. See how flaky this map is? I almost think that Google is charging for this map now and they're not they're not paying for it. It says for development purposes only here. But you can with Whisper, you can kind of get an idea of where you're getting out to and who's hearing you and who are you hearing. And for me, I'm in Missouri and I'm hearing and transmitting and contacting people on the outer edges. I have a dipole that's north and south. So everyone I talk to tends to be in this little range right here of the, of the east and the west. But the cool thing is you can zoom in and when you, when you find yourself, you can click on this, click on a person, and they'll tell you if they're hearing you or if, if you're being heard. So while this is still working, I'm gonna put in my call sign and do an update and if the map is empty that means no one's hearing me whoa seriously oh well i forgot i forgot to bring it down to five watts you're supposed to bring the signal down to five watts to to really whisper and i forgot to do that i'm at more like 20 watts so i'm going to bring it down to five watts it's supposed to be weak signals but all of these people here are hearing me. Let's take a look. We've got hearing N9YO is KB1MH way up here in the northeast. Notice how I've got my north and south dipole and everyone is hearing me on this side and this side and even into Europe. Last night I did this and someone heard me in South Africa. Check this out. Someone's hearing me hearing N9YO in Germany. Someone's hearing me in Germany. Check this out. Someone hears me in Madagascar. No. Remember Madagascar from the game Risk? Someone hears me in the island of Reunion. This tiny little island. Someone's hearing me here. Isn't that cool? Hearing N9YO. I'm being heard across the world, across Africa. But of course, the majority of the people that are hearing me right now are in the United States, and lots of radios in the US and Canada. But that's what's so cool about Whisper. In WSJTX software, if you're not aware of it, comes with Whisper. It's so cool. Um, you're supposed to use it with five watts, but all of these people are hearing me. All right now. For those of you that are interested in my settings on my radio, let me go through that and let you see that right now. Okay, as you know, the settings on here, by the way, you can Google, you can YouTube this. Other people have done this already. You need to have this USB D and you need to go USB D 
and you need to go into connectors we have AF 50% off off okay 50 50 44 mic accessory okay now up here we have USB external keypad nothing CIV nothings USB serial function CIV let's go down here we have 9600 RTS DTR DTR these are my settings okay for this setting CIV we have let's go to the top auto 94H on 00, zero. off unlink from unlink UN link from remote I think that's very important I tried it with link and without and this is the only one that works 115 200 baud rate on that's it those are all the settings it's very important that USB D you need to make sure that your uh, Raspberry Pi and WSJTX is actually uh, controlling your rig otherwise it's very hard and it won't work